In this video, we are going to discuss the top three reasons why candidates fail quant interviews. Let's get started. Suppose you aspire to break into top quant trading firms like Optiver, Citadel, or Jane Street. Knowing the competition is fierce, you study diligently. You go through many interview questions covering probability, combinatorics, and brain teasers. Finally, you enter the interview room, and to your surprise, you're asked a medium difficulty problem you've seen before. You're happy. This is your moment. Then comes the twist. You have 30 to 60 seconds to solve it. One of the interview round at five rings consists of 15 such easy to medium level problems, each to be solved within 30 to 60 seconds. If you're not prepared for this rapid fire format, you might struggle to keep up. Here's another example problem. Consider a knight placed on an infinite chessboard. At each step, it chooses uniformly at random one of its eight valid moves. Estimate the expected number of distinct squares the knight visits after making 50 random moves. Finding the exact answer to this problem is practically impossible without computer help. Instead, you're expected to provide a reasonable estimate. While standard techniques for calculating expected values may be somewhat helpful, the key is to quickly approximate using intuition or clever heuristics. If you're unprepared for estimation problems, you might panic and freeze under pressure. To make their resume look impressive, many candidates end up listing skills or projects they don't actually understand well. Your resume isn't just a checklist, it's the starting point for your interview. Interviewers often use it to decide what to explore in depth, so everything you list should be something you can speak about confidently. Being unfamiliar with the basics of your resume will usually lead to immediate rejection. Interviewers may interpret it as dishonesty or an attempt to exaggerate your skills. So, at the very least, be familiar with the basics of your resume. However, you will almost certainly be asked to explain some topics from your resume in depth. So, ideally, prepare as many topics from your resume in depth as possible. Many candidates underestimate the difficulty of quant interviews. They go through a handful of classic brain teasers, memorize their solutions, and assume that it's enough. However, quant finance is a competitive field. Interviewers know that many candidates may already be familiar with the solutions to well-known problems. As a result, firms design tough interviews to identify candidates with genuine problem-solving ability. For example, let's solve a problem that was asked at a top quant firm. Consider a 3 cross 3 grid with random integers filled in the cells. Two cells are considered neighbors if they share a side. For example, these two cells are neighbors. On the other hand, these two cells are not neighbors. For each cell, you can either keep its current value or increase it by one once. Note that this operation can be performed at most once on each cell. Additionally, this operation can be performed independently on each cell. So, you can increase the value of some cells by one while leaving others unchanged. We want to transform the grid so that no two neighboring cells have the same value. For example, in this case, we can increase the value of the top left cell by one and no two neighboring cells would have the same value. The question is, using this operation, can we transform any M cross N grid filled with random integers so that no two neighboring cells have the same value? If yes, prove it. If no, provide a counterexample. Pause the video here if you want to give it a try. Here's the solution. It is always possible to transform any M cross N grid filled with random integers so that no two neighboring cells have the same value. We will prove this for this 5 cross 5 grid. The same proof applies to any general M cross N grid. Color the grid in an alternating black and white pattern, similar to a chessboard. We can make all the numbers in the white cells odd. To do this, leave the number unchanged if it is already odd, and add one if it is even. Similarly, we can make all the numbers in the black cells even. Now, a black cell cannot have the same value as any of its neighbors, since all its neighbors are white cells with opposite parity. The same reasoning applies to white cells. So, after these operations, no two neighboring cells will have the same value. We can apply the same approach to any general M cross N grid. Candidates were given only about 10 minutes to solve this problem. If you've merely memorized the solutions to a handful of well-known quant puzzles, you're unlikely to perform well on problems like these. The bottom line is, don't underestimate the difficulty. Prepare as thoroughly as you can, given the time you have. Hope you liked the video. If you want to learn how to ace your quant interviews, we invite you to check out our course Quant Interview Masterclass, where we teach you how to think when solving difficult problems. We also cover the entire theory specifically tailored for quant interviews along with over a thousand problems. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Until then, Godspeed.